hello guys welcome to the next video of antenna on clay uh, you would be wondering what you are seeing on slide actually um, we we given a chance of having so many hands and since so many things are happening with the cell phone we'll be very glad to use it probably when if we have so many hands with us okay the main uh, agenda of this uh, video is how does my antenna which i have designed knows that it has to take up that particular frequency for which it is designed for so what all possible communications can we think of i mean there are n number of communications i have just listed a few of them satellite communication dth bluetooth gsm the cellular communication we do have 4g 3g 4g and all we have wifi we do, we have nfc near field communication also in some cell phones and tv remote all of them are happening at radio frequency of microwave frequencies uh assume all these communications are happening at one place at a particular place and for each of these communications which i have put in the slides needs an antenna yeah any kind of communication wherein i need to throw the energy in the free space i need antenna okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 such examples i have given so probably eight such antennas are there in a one in one place so uh, assume at all all are happening at the same time the communication is happening at the same time how does the one particular antenna knows that it needs to take that signal itself yeah that's what is our question right how does an antenna know that it has to take the frequency for which it is designed that's something to be thought about there are n number of antennas there all the energy of all different frequencies are falling on it yeah how does my antenna know that it has to take that signal for which it is designed only before we even go into this concept there's something which we need to understand or recall maximum power transfer theorem which says i have a source i have a load and this the uh, transmission uh, medium might be wired itself so when i have such things what does the maximum power transfer theorem say it says that if the power, maximum power needs to tra travel from or transmit between from source to load the impedance between these two should be matched okay assuming the source impedance to be zs the load impedance to be zl the impedance between these two has to be matched only when there will be maximum power transfer happening now in my wireless scenario which means the signal which is getting carried in wire needs to be thrown out in wireless what is there in load we open circuited we tapered we did all that circuits and finally who is there in the load right now it's antenna yeah so now i have my source and at the load end is my antenna so the question now comes is should the antenna impedance be matched to source impedance or not what do you think what does the maximum power transfer theorem even say that the impedance should match correct so if it is an antenna at the load should the impedance be matched of course yes right my load is just replaced by antenna it is a load now so the impedance has to match okay next question comes is there are n number of companies who manufacture who devise n number of load n number of antennas so is there any universal accepted impedance value for us what do you think we need to have one right because i need to follow one impedance value so that it every other company which is manufacturing an antenna will exactly tune into that particular impedance of the source also how much is an impedance okay it's 50 ohms easy to remember easy to know it's 50 ohm impedance which we need to uh, always keep at for an antenna so that uh, the impedance at the source is also 50 ohms hence its maximum power transfer theorem okay why did we even come here i mean what was our agenda our agenda was how will my antenna sensitively pick up for the frequency for which it is designed right so why am i talking about impedance matching is so we now know the impedance of an antenna should be 50 ohms okay let's get back or come back to the another concept of antenna which says if i tell someone design an antenna okay so always an antenna is designed with respect to its frequency first question which anyone should ask when it is told to design an antenna is at what frequency should i do it it's a frequency dependent device 
So why is antenna dependent on frequencies? The size or the dimension of antenna when I design, it corresponds to the wavelength. So once I know the frequency, I will calculate the wavelength using the formula lambda is equal to c by f, okay? c being the speed of light which is 3 to 10 to the power 8 and frequency whatever value is given, hence I calculate the wavelength. So the antenna size or the dimension always depends upon the wavelength of an antenna, wavelength of that particular frequency. So when I do this, something magic happens. So what's the magic is? the impedance automatically gets tuned to 50 ohms. Isn't that amazing? Um, I mean, what does it even tell us? So all I have to do is design an antenna for a particular frequency for which it needs to be operated at. If I know GSM, maybe 800, 900 megahertz, I design an antenna at that frequency. If I want to design an antenna at Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, I know it. If I want an antenna at satellite communication, I know the frequency. So all I have to do is what? design my antenna for that frequency for which it is supposed to be done. In such case what happens, the impedance of it automatically gets tuned to 50 ohms. Okay. Automatically how it is done is when I always design my dimensions with respect to its wavelength, it only that particular frequency wavelength can hit on that frequency or in other words, I have 10 antennas here of 10 different frequencies. All the signals of different frequencies are falling onto antenna. One particular antenna, uh, take it as my cellular GSM antenna or at around 800-900 megahertz, the frequency, all these frequency signals are falling onto it but it is more sensitive to that frequency at GSM because the impedance is perfectly matched at 50 ohms, correct? How about the impedance for other frequencies then? It's not 50 ohms, it, it may be any other value. Hence. When the impedance is not 50 ohms, what happens? Maximum power transfer does not happen, which means antenna, this, even though the radiation is falling onto it, antenna will not be sensitive enough to take it. It can take it only when the impedance is perfectly matched. It will take maximum radiation from that frequency for which it is designed. Why? The impedance is perfectly matched. For any other frequency, since I have not designed for any other frequency, even if the signal falls on it, it is insensitive to it. It would be at any other impedance value. Hence, the since there is no maximum power transfer happening because the impedance is not matched, it will not take energy. Everything gets reflected back. The only thing it absorbs it, that frequency for which it is tuned. Hence, impedance matching is very, very, very important when we design an antenna. That's the first criteria I would uh, solve when I start to design an antenna. Okay. So in this session, it was just to make uh, you understand what happens or how exactly antenna uh, tunes itself to the frequency it is designed. So the magic is what? When, when I design an antenna to that particular uh, uh, frequency by designing its dimension corresponding to the wavelength for that frequency, automatically gets tuned to 50 ohms. This is really a fascinating uh, thing for me. I mean, when I started working on antennas, so these, though it is very small things, these really fascinated me. See, am I doing anything to match at 50 ohms? No, right? What did I do? Given the frequency, I designed my size according to the frequency, uh, according to the wavelength. That's all I did. The impedance automatically got matched to it. So it is definitely absorbing that frequency. So it's, it's as good as telling uh, if an impedance I mean, we, we do say, right, there are millions of people here. I do have only three best friends. Uh, the reason being, uh, the impedance matching between us is perfectly happened. Hence, no matter how the signal is being transmitted from there to here, I will always get it. So, impedance matching is very, very, very important for us. So, and for an antenna also. Okay. So, this ends the antenna session for today. Next class, we will see uh, that... Now I know to design an antenna, I need to know frequency. What are the other parameters as such which I need to know to design an antenna? So basic parameters to design an antenna will be dealt in the next video. Thank you so much.